Welcome back to Freedom 560. I am your guest host, Dan Muir, sitting in for Ken Clark. Hey, you know, Terrence, someday I want my own disclaimer. I love that disclaimer that they have for Ken. It is so cool. Anyway, we're going to be talking about um, self-governance. Are we still the people that could be, can we govern ourselves? Or, or do we have to have a big overbearing government telling us what to do? But let's hear what Ronald Reagan had to say about self-governance. This idea that government is beholden to the people, that it has no other source of power except the sovereign people is still the newest and the most unique idea in all the long history of man's relation to man. This is the issue of this election. Whether we believe in our capacity for self-government or whether we abandon the American Revolution and confess that a little intellectual elite in a far distant capital can plan our lives for us better than we can plan them ourselves. You and I are told increasingly we have to choose between a left or right. Well, I'd like to suggest there is no such thing as a left or right. There's only an up or down. Man's old, old age dream, the ultimate in individual freedom consistent with law and order, or down to the ant-heap of totalitarianism. And regardless of their sincerity, their humanitarian motives, those who would trade our freedom for security have embarked on this downward course. And this so there you go. There's the Gipper. Can we still be a people that are self-governed? On the phone with me, I have Mark Herr. He's the president of the Center for Self-Governance. Mark, welcome to Freedom 560. How are you doing this afternoon? Dan, thank you, and thanks to Ken for having us on. I, I, hey, by the way, I like your last caller you had who said uh, you, should, you should have your new name, Dan the Machete. That's kind of cool. <laughs> I like that name. Isn't that neat? So I think that's good. Dan the Machete. I think, I think it's so much easier than Muir. Nobody can remember Muir, but Dan the Machete, <laughs> machete sitting in for Ken the Sledgehammer. I love it. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I love it. Well, so, so, Mark, are we a people? Can we, can we go back to being self-governed, or, or is it just lost? Where, where are we at? Not, we absolutely have the capacity to be self-governing. Madison, James Madison said um, that, that Ronald Reagan was quoting, he said, we base this American experiment on the capacity of mankind for self-government. That means not everybody's going to be self-governing. We just need a tireless minority who are keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. In the minds of men is where self-governance takes place. Do the American people, and I would say even the people here in Colorado and the surrounding states that are listening to you, do they believe that they have, actually have the power to control their instituted government? Uh, your Constitution, Article 2, Section 2, says that the people of this state have the sole and exclusive right of governing themselves. Do the people of Colorado... Are they feeling, do they have the sense that they are governing themselves or are they being governed? It's, this requires an understanding of their government. And John Thomas Jefferson said, Dan, he said, self-governance is not natural. It's the result of habit and long training. Have we removed the training of self-governance out of our schools, our communities, and from our dinner tables? Oh, Mark, Mark we sure have, even, even when I was going to school back in the early 80s, um, and I grew up in eastern Iowa, we had one semester of civics. Well, one semester out of four years. Oh, my gosh, yes. And, 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 and so how, how are you supposed to learn? How are you supposed to know what, you, what your responsibilities are? You know, everybody, my rights, I got this right, I got, this, but what are my responsibilities? What do I, how do I keep these freedoms? How do I keep these rights if we're not teaching our kids? Well, you know, that's a really interesting question, because when did centralized governance ever have a desire for the people to be self-governing? Why is it that we expect public education that is controlled by centralized governance to teach our children to be self-governing? It doesn't have a vested interest in your self-governance or your... It has zero interest. And we see this by the symptoms of Common Core and Agenda 21 and all of those other symptoms that people are very, very concerned about right now. The secret sauce in the system of our government is that we have a capacity to be self-governing. It requires habit and long training. And the system of government requires the people to keep it. 
You know, there's a great story from when the Constitution was signed in 1787. A woman who could not vote or hold office in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, approached Benjamin Franklin as he was being carried out. And she asked him, did you give us a monarchy or a republic? Did you replace King George with King George? And his response to this woman who could not vote or hold office, it is a republic if you can keep it. If that you meant can keep she it. Must she had to be self-governing, Dan. Her name is Elizabeth Powell. She lived a couple blocks from the Constitution Hall. And by the way, we just had our first inaugural convention there in her house on the second floor where the first three presidents danced. It was absolutely phenomenal. I did not know that part of history. I did not know that that happened at her house. That is, that's absolutely incredible. And, you know, so we've, we've spent the last 200 and, what, 30-odd, six years, something like that, trying to dismantle this, trying to make a King George again. Because oh. it, I mean, don't you, doesn't it, doesn't it feel like that? And especially in the last hundred years when the progressives really got a hold of everybody, when they were able to, when they were able to co-opt the press, when Wilson was able to bring the press in for the first, what do they call that? Uh, we see that press dinner that they had now, that they have again. Um, yes. When he, when he co-opted the press, instead of having somebody out there keeping an eye on the government, he brought him in. Well, you know, the regressives uh, definitely are trying to <laughs> regress us pre-1776 to go back to a single jurisdiction of monarchical rule-by-one type of government. And the reason for that is they do not believe the average person is smart enough or capable enough of being self-governing. And this is far from the truth. Our organization, Center for Self-Governance, we have, have evidence from around the country that when people are taught how to be self-governing, that the impact on their community and the impact on their prosperity increases. I'll give you a case in point. Okay. Matter of fact, I'll give you two or three. Go for it. In District 7 of the state of Virginia, which was the congressional district for a former congressman named Eric Cantor. Say that one more See, time. I former Congressman Eric Cantor. I said it for you. I love the sound of that. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I mean, from our standpoint in our organization, we don't discriminate whether a person is a single person is Republican or Democrat. But it happened to be that our students in District 7 began taking our courses uh, sometime before the primaries there in District 7. And they used the principles of self-governance to craft their communications with their fellow constituents in District 7, and the District 7 constituents, they were the ones responsible for removing Eric Cantor from office. The media and the Republican establishment for that particular case were left befuddled because they don't understand. It's not the money that controls the government. It is the self-governing citizen under this system of a republic that does, and hence Eric Cantor was removed. Right, and Another then case in and then, and then, Mark, when you break that down even a little bit more, the, the average Joe, the, the citizen who understood about self-governance and took the reins and put the reins in his own hands, beat the big dollars. If I remember yeah. right, he, Eric, Eric Cantor, what did he outspend his opponent? 10 to 1? Something like no, that? No, no, no. 30 to 1. 30 to 1. 5.4 million dollars to just over 180 thousand dollars. That's a ridiculous uh, difference. But the conventional wisdom says we spend tons of money, we hire lots of consultants, and then they craft the messaging to control the herd of humanity, and the herd of humanity will follow our most glorious message. But that's not that's not how the system is designed. The self-governing citizen within District 7, understanding the principles with which they participate in government, they communicated with their fellow citizens. They engaged uh, in, the, in the campaigns. They're the ones who were responsible for removing Eric Cantor for off from office. Let me give you a practical example at the, uh, at the state level, because this might be more appropriate to you guys here in Colorado with your governor and the relationship you guys have with him. Yeah, go in ahead. Arizona... In Arizona, a group of our CSG-trained students discovered that the governor of the state of Arizona was bypassing them with regards to their superintendent of public instruction, which happens to be a fifth executive in their constitution. When they discovered the bypass, they began to 
use self-governing principles and communicating the bypass to those people out in the community who are the constituents and getting their input as to whether this was an appropriate action for the governor to take. When the people became engaged and they were, uh, when they were properly informed, those citizens, they're the ones who instructed their representatives from their districts to restrict the governor from exercising undue influence and changing their constitution without their permission. Absolutely phenomenal. Just happened two weeks ago. That's, that's an absolutely incredible story that I had not heard of. I was not aware of that. Well, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's common core folks around the country are following this because the superintendent of public instruction in Arizona, um, she got elected on the notion that she was going to do what she could to remove common core. And as a result, the governor who campaigned in Arizona against common core, but he um, began to take actions to support it. And immediately went to the legislature to try to remove uh, her functions and powers as a superintendent of public instruction, which is which changes the Constitution, in effect. Anyway, well, well this, Com- Common Core is definitely, we're going to have to go to break here pretty quick, but Common Core is definitely one of the huge plagues right now going through the country, and parents are fighting back because parents are becoming educated and they're mm. taking action. The best way to have a mom rear up her claws is to start going after her kids on this kind of stuff. And hey, yeah. uh, When mom ain't happy, ain't nobody the, happy. Nobody's happy. So, okay, so Mark, hang tight. We're on the phone with uh, Mark Herr, president of the Center of Self-Governance, and when we get back after this break, we'll talk more about Common Core and what you can do to fight back. You're listening to Freedom 5 60 on KLZ 560. Welcome back to Freedom 560. I am Dan Muir, your guest host, sitting in. And, and you know, Margo and Mark Her thing, maybe I should start calling myself Dan the Machete. What do you think, Terrence? Terrence, Terrence has no opinion. Well, he's kind of, well, he doesn't know. <laughs> but anyway, welcome back to Freedom 560. Mark, you know, this, this, is, this is the whole problem, and I think you're nailing it, is that we're, we're becoming so dependent. And, and we're also, there's another thing, too, is that we're, 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 we don't want to have any pain in our lives, and we don't want anybody to feel bad. We want to bring everybody to the same, make them all equal. Not, you know, not equal opportunity, but, but equal outcome. And that's part of the big problem with Common Core. I mean, just think of the name of it common core. We're all going to be common. Well, what do you do with kids that can excel? What do you do with kids that, that need a little bit of help? Do you, do you end up just bringing everybody down to the lowest de- common denominator? What, what happens there? Well, you know, it's, it's very interesting. When you want to create a single jurisdiction of government like North Korea, <laughs> you have to give everybody the same kind of education. You have to have them all thinking the same kinds of things. And what they really want you to be to be thinking is that you are not the source of power. Now, your constitution in Colorado says all political power is vested in and derived from the people. Well, in North Korea, they are trained to think that all power originates with government and is derived from government. Right, and that's, that's, real, that's becoming our mindset. Yeah, I mean, just even in casual conversation, well, there ought to be a law against that. No, can't you just kind of like, you know, take care of it yourself? Am I, am I way off base here? Well, no, not at all. You know, the, the, the function of people participating in their local governance, for example, uh, like in Pueblo County, for example, at the city level, a group of students who enacted some of these self-governing principles they themselves wielded their power to exercise their control over their government. And as a result, uh, two or three of the city councilmen either resigned or were in the process of being recalled as a result. Uh, the, the key here, Dan, is this. If you learn the habit of self-governance and exercise it over the course of your, law, your lifetime, you will preserve to yourself a course of prosperity and self-government, as John Adams stated in his first inaugural address. Not learning self-governance is the secret to losing our country. North Koreans are not taught how to be self-governing, 
nor are they taught that they have anything other than a single jurisdiction of national government. So Colorado, in a, in, in a sense, becomes beholden to the national government. The county becomes beholden to the federal dollars, or the city of Pueblo becomes beholden, the school district. And so common core standards, right. then, they become issued by the national government. It becomes a single jurisdiction of governance. The, 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 the experiment that the founders created was this. If the people at the local level, if they would enforce the dual jurisdictions between the school all the way to the federal on a daily basis, they could keep their country. It's not easy to do because it requires you to sacrifice somewhat like Debbie Lee's son in Ramadi did. No, you know, you're absolutely right. You know, freedom isn't free and self-governance is, is hard. And, but it, but it, you know, like I tell my kids, you get the most re rewards from the harder you work, the harder you work, the bigger the rewards. And yes. with hard work comes pain. And if, and, and everybody, if you're just tuning in, I apologize. We're on the phone right now with Mark Herr, and he's the president of the Center for Self Governance. And Mark, uh, before we run out of time, I want you to tell people a little bit about your group and uh, how they can get in touch with you if they want to help spread this message. Absolutely. Um, Center for Self-Governance, we're, we're a nonprofit C3 organization. Um, we teach citizens how to apply their civics. We teach them how to exercise self-governance. And we teach them how to enforce the jurisdictions between their local government to the federal government on a daily basis. Um, they can get a hold of us at centerforselfgovernance.com. Uh, we're doing uh, classes and presentations right now in Colorado. I'm going to Lamar, Colorado tonight to make a presentation will be in Littleton tomorrow night. But all of these things can be located on our website. And if there's any questions, uh, you can send us a note. There's also some YouTube, Facebook things if you want to look at videos to get more information. But I would really encourage your listeners for this one thing, Dan. That is, do you have the capacity to be self-governing? Are you willing to learn the habit of self-governing? And then are you willing to keep your republic if you're willing to keep your republic, you have to be self-governing. That is how the founders designed the system. You know, Mark, that really is the call. And it took me... I, I was kind of awake. You know, I, I dabbled in and out of politics here and there throughout most of my adult life. I, I was even a, a junior delegate back in the 80s uh, when Ronald Reagan was running for president. Um, so I, I was in and out. But it wasn't until, really, I became uh, kind of an old married man, so to speak, that I started seeing how all this is affecting everything, that my kids are, are not even growing up in a world anywhere close to the one I grew up in, with the freedoms mm -hmm. and the opportunities. And, and that at least it seems like it, it's collapsing among, upon itself. It's like, and then, and then Mark, when I, was, when I was running our family business, oh mm -hmm. my gosh, the amount of torpedoes and artillery <laughs> shells headed your way just to run a business is unbelievable. Oh, I, hey Dan, I've got a, I've got one for you. So, did you did you know uh, one of your professors at Colorado State University back in 1980 did a, a research project on the number of regulations to, that govern a cheeseburger, and he <laughs> found that there were over 41,000 regulations to govern a cheeseburger. And this so is back when in the 80s, 41,000 regs is probably doubled by now. That's why you got the it's double cheeseburger. I don't know. That's years crazy, now, right? I mean, I can't imagine. Um, we started a hashtag called hashtag reg free burger. What does your regulation free burger look like? Does, do you want it to look like 41,000 regs? No. Or does it need to have just a few regs on it? Like, no salmonella, please. That'd be a but good you, one. I mean, listen, here's, here's, a, here's a hilarious one. <laughs> ketchup, ketchup cannot flow more than 9 centimeters at 69 degrees Fahrenheit over 30 seconds. You've got to be kidding me. There's a reg on that? You mean the yeah, ketchup the manufacturers the can't ketchup. figure out for themselves how to make decent ketchup? You know, so what I was thinking is I want to go <laughs> to a restaurant, bring in a power of attorney and say, look, I absolve <laughs> you from all liability over every regulation. Here's my reg-free burger. I want ketchup that flows at 15 centimeters at 32 degrees Fahrenheit over one minute. <laughs> I love it. Absolutely. 41,000. Regular, and we call ourselves a free people. Oh my gosh! I mean, I'm just, just I'm just blown away by that. That's just on a cheeseburger. Yeah, imagine what it's like for hot dogs. Oh jeez. 
<laughs> yeah, watch that sausage be made, right? Oh, my gosh. That's right. Can, can you imagine? I mean, 41,000 rigs. Now, who can even keep track? How would you know? You know, I, I saw something the other day that says that but before you even get to work in the morning, you've probably committed three felonies. And you didn't yeah. even know it. The person who knows best about those 41,000 regulations is the guy or the gal who owns the business and makes the burger. That's true. Because when you told me about your business, you know, when the business owner is trying to make a living for themselves and there's the expectation that government will do certain things, you know, to provide or secure our rights, when government takes over the, 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 the process of thinking on our behalf and we convert into a single jurisdiction, somewhat like a North Korea, what's happening is, is the citizens at the local level are not enforcing the jurisdiction. They're not, in other words, at the point where Common Core became nationally instituted, the parents at the local level were not engaged at the school board level in the first place. And so now they're reacting. So I would really encourage the parents who are listening, the teachers who are listening, and the citizens who understand what's happening. What's very important here is you must learn that this is a symptom of losing the country. It's one symptom. The key to fixing the country or saving it is learning to be self-governing on a daily basis. It's how your system was designed. Check us out at centerforselfgovernance.com. Absolutely. You know, Mark, and where it starts is at home. You have to That's start at exactly home. You have right. to teach your, your your wife. I had to teach my wife about civics, and then then we now we're teaching our kids, and now we expand out to our neighbors. And now it's just like Margo, the our first guest we had on. You sp spread it out to your community. Then you can change your town. Then you can change your county. Then you can change yes. your state, and then you can change the country. Can I tell you a real quick story? Because I know you have to sign off. This is a nine-year-old girl who took our level one class in Mrs. Powell's house in Philadelphia a couple weeks ago. Okay. She's from New Jersey. She, after the class, she went to the Trenton Capitol. The tour guide said to her and her classmates of 50 people, so what kind of form of government do we have? And nobody answered, including Alexis. And the tour guide said, we're a democracy. Oh, and Alexis raised her hand and she says, well, I thought we were a republic. Yay! She had just taken our class. <laughs> And the tour guide hemmed and hawed and stuttered and began to sweat. And then she says, oh, we're a democratic republic. They went inside. Okay. They went into Chris Christie's office, and, and they were looking at the flag, and Alexis could not let it go. And she asked the tour guide, she said, you know, you told us that we're a democracy, but when we pledge allegiance to the flag, why do we say republic? Oh. And the and the lady said to her, she says, well, a democracy and a republic are kind of the same thing. And it was a phenomenal exchange because here you had this nine-year-old girl who had learned a simple fundamental in our training program. She implied it in her civics at a field trip in the capital of New York. Mark, Jersey. that is absolutely an incredible story. Unfortunately, we've got to go. The music is going to start. Mark, thank you so much for coming on Freedom 560. Everybody, go to his website, check it out. And uh, we'll be right back after the news at the top of the hour with The Blaze. You're listening to Freedom 560.